if you put me in control of Star Trek, I will not ruin Star Trek. Star Trek's actually not that hard to do. There are certain things that make Star Trek Star Trek that make it hopeful, interesting. None of what they decided to do with Star Trek Discovery. So, Star Trek Discovery posts abysmal ratings in first season's official CBS debut. This was a series that they came up with, and it's funny because they keep banging out so many Star Trek series that really don't mean very much, but they figure, you know, if we spend a lot of money on these, maybe that'll make them good. It, it, that's not what, what you do have to have standards. You do have to have quality. You do have to have a good, strong creative team, but you have to make a decision about like, well, how is this going to be great? And then it could be great. But this is one of those get woke, go broke things. Uh, because they decided when they would make Star Trek Discovery, they would just kind of make it, um, you know, awful. Uh, this goes back to 2019. Star Trek Discovery's mansplaining takedown returns the series' roots. Returns to the series' roots. You know, in what way is it returning to the roots? Uh, okay, it, this is coming from uh, The Verge, and uh, this, is not, this is about when Discovery first came out. It's a brutal moment with an pointed message in a franchise that's always been about progressive politics. You know, they just try desperately to lie and make it true. It, it, the whole movement is just endless gaslighting, uh, which is to say they do what they accuse you of doing and they tell you that you're crazy um, for believing what's actually true. So um, in the premiere episode, Brother welcomed Christopher Pike so they could go and mess with Canon and whatnot. It's Captain who helmed the original USS Star Enterprise and it's rejected original 1965 pilot before Star Trek creator Gene Roddenberry was asked to create a new pilot with a now iconic James T. Kirk in the chair. So um, here's what they did. The move was heavy handed. It's made clear from the moment he appears on the transformer pad that this Lieutenant Connolly barging into the story where fans expected Spock is kind of a douchebag, more Winklevoss than Vulcan. At every opportunity, uh, he negs, <laughs> he negs Burnham's suggestion and hypothesis about the mysterious red signals that have appeared across the galaxy. Then, when the team deploys a set of explorer pods to navigate an unpredictable asteroid cluster, he presumes, he presumes he knows the vehicles better than her. But she's so smart because she's a girl. Even though she was the original test pilot for the pods. When she warns him about the way he's navigating, he starts loudly telling her why she's wrong which actually is not a power move. You just have to tell them straight, and then they get the point. And in the middle of this explanation, a rogue asteroid runs sidelong into his pod, killing him instantly. So uh, on top of everything else, the show frequently tosses in tiny pointed nods to progressive politics. And yes, they, um, they kill him in the middle of uh, mansplaining because they kill mansplaining. And they can do that because they control Star Trek. Well, what they can't though do is is even if they get rid of every good version of Star Trek and just kind of wipe out all good new content, they can't force people to watch it. They can try, they can beg, they can plead, but people still aren't going to watch it. And Star Trek Discovery, that was there to build CBS's uh, live uh, network direct to consumer streaming service. You know, their own cool version of Netflix. But the problem is, if it's not good, it doesn't draw anyone to the platform. So they were like, okay, well, let's just do this. Since we've spent an incredible fortune on producing this series, and the sets are nice. They obviously spent a lot of money. I'm sure uh, everyone is being uh, overpaid. Um, you know, that's fantastic, but that those numbers don't actually work, and they don't add up, particularly when you're not getting the viewership that you were hoping you were going to get. So what can they do um about that, what can they do instead? Well, they can say, well, tell you what, we'll put it on CBS. This way we can kind of spread the budget out a little bit. And with CBS's extra audience and the already built-in audience, the very few people that they have uh, from their streaming service, they could kind of, they've got some awareness and, and maybe that'll create some excitement for it, some buzz, and then it'll be successful. No, no, it didn't work. It didn't work. This article's from bounding into comics. And by the way, we'll get into this article. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Click the bell for notifications so you can stay updated and support my work that way. I really appreciate you doing that. 
CBS's attempt to introduce Star Trek Discovery to a wider audience has backfired spectacularly as the series' full premiere on broadcast TV has resulted in abysmal, that means really, really bad, but it's a great, great adjective, abysmal ratings numbers. She doesn't look very happy, does she? You know what's amazing about the crew too? Just to go back to this for a second. If you look at the crew, and this is the problem with the whole um, lack of gender roles, basically, or lack of like any typically appearing uh, characteristics you would recognize. Who's the leader? Who's the leader of this group? Anyone? I mean, you have that guy, the fish man, and he's cool looking uh, and stuff like that. But does anyone stand out? Does anyone stand with any kind of confidence? Is there anyone who you would say, this is the person that's in charge of the pack? No, nobody. And that's what makes it bland. It makes it unrealistic. It makes it an SJW fantasy. Not something that's like good content or a story. Nothing is going to happen if you don't have like different characters, right? You can't just have... That's why even though Marvel has exploited and stripped mine the heck of its out of its characters, you don't have like a group like the X-Men where literally like seven Wolverines. By the way, copyright Adam Post. That's my idea. Watch them rip it off. But anyways, you know, you can't have like six or seven of the same characters, whether they're interesting or boring or cool. You just can't. You have to have some mix in the... Dare I say, you have to have some diversity, like of identity, of what each of the different characters are trying to achieve. And then like individually, and then what are they trying to achieve as a group? And who's their leader? There is no leader in this picture, not the way it's designed. They can assign it. They can make um, this girl the leader. They can make her the leader. They can make Fishman the leader. Or better yet, they could take turns being leader in every episode. Don't give them any ideas. Last month, amid rapidly declining viewership numbers for the latest Star Trek series, current franchise development head Alex Kurtzman announced that Star Trek Discovery's final season, or excuse me, first season, would officially debut on broadcast television. Okay. So they're going to put the first season on broadcast television. Unfortunately, Discovery's lateral move from CBS Access to CBS proper, the main channel, appears to have failed to entice more audiences to watch the series. Well, I mean, you know, if the content exists, it exists. If they want to do reruns on CBS, they can. If they want to use that to kind of maybe create some awareness. If I was them and I was... If I was them, I would throw this whole project out. I would. There are Star Trek fans that really know what they would do. I would talk to a lot of Star Trek fans and find out exactly what untold stories they want to see. Um, good, bad, and indifferent. And which ones were appropriate for films and which ones were appropriate for um, TV shows. And then I would also look and see, like, maybe the films should lead into the TV shows. Maybe the TV shows should be prequels to films. Um, like, it, it, it does take some work, but could you think of it? Like, yeah, you could do it. But I wouldn't create, like, SJW fantasies of, like, let's try to prove that mansplaining will get you killed if you ever wind up in space, and you should always listen to the girl if she has some prior experience. And by the way, even if you do have prior experience, sometimes mansplaining is necessary. And the reason why is decision-making, being confident in making a decision and moving forward. It's not just a matter to have experience and to have knowledge. It's important to know how to coalesce all that knowledge, put it in context with what you're currently able to do and not able to do, and then make a decision and then move forward with action. And just to the extent that you can see there's no leader in this picture, there shouldn't be nobody not listening to mansplaining. You know, anybody who's ready to mansplain and lead the way, let them lead the way. If they get themselves killed, then you step up and you take over. According to Variety, Discovery's broadcast Debut netted only a 0.2 rating among adults 18 to 49 and drew a tragically low 1.7 million viewers. For comparison, rerun of Michael Weatherly's led legal drama, Bull, that aired two weeks ago in the same 10 p.m. time spot, put 1.9 million viewers for an overall 0.3 rating. Oh. 
Technically, this is the second time this particular episode has aired on CBS, as it was previously aired as a special preview in 2017 to promote the series' then-upcoming first season. Which is clever. Why not do stuff like that? You can do all sorts of clever things. But, like, the content's got to be good, you know, and, and leave out the politics, right? This broadcast managed to pull in 9.6 million viewers for a total of rating of 1.9, mostly likely due to general audience interest in the first new Star Trek series in years and its time slot immediately following that week's Sunday night... Uh, yeah, Sunday night NFL game. What a great lead-in. Though the series was exclusive to the CBS all-access streaming platform in the United States, Discovery was broadcast in Canada on the CTV network and provides some numbers for further comparison. Numbers, you can't... Numbers don't lie. The numbers do not lie. Discovery debuted in Canada with a viewership of 2.274 million but by the end of its first 15-episode season, the series only pulled 927,000. That's not good. 66% season total loss. Oof, oof. 60%. Excuse me. This guy. <laughs> Look at this guy with the beard and the Vulcan ears. I know, we'll give him a beard. Now people will want to watch it. It takes more than a beard. I, it seems messy for a Vulcan for some reason. You'd think they should be clean-shaven. This lack of interest in this series would bleed over into a second season as its premiere episode failed to appear in the top 30 rankings during its debut week with less than 978,000 viewers. Can you imagine you control and you own Star Trek? You give it a huge budget. It's like, yeah, but we got, we got to make the story like, you know, SJW. We can't really. We have to teach men a lesson as part of the story. It's like, then don't even do the project. Come on. You know no one's going to watch this. Viewership numbers would only continue to plummet as the season two's finale couldn't even manage to draw 816,000 viewers. The finale? Throw zombies in there. The total viewership numbers for The Blacklist, the 30th ranked show in Canada for the week of April 15th. Oh my God, to April 21st. That is not good. Maybe more interesting is that Orville beat out Star Trek Discovery in Canada for the week of April 8th to April 14th. The, you know, the Orville is a parody Star Trek, but it's fun. Uh, the Orville Season 2, Episode 12, Sanctuary, ranked 29th in total viewership with 841,000. Star Trek Discovery failed to, to list the top 30. Oh, man. That is unfortunate. The television premiere of The Vulcan Hello was covered by YouTuber Overlord, who bluntly asserted Kurtzman Trek is dead. Yeah, sad. The numbers are in, folks. There's no disputing these numbers. Um, yeah, the Overlord DVDs. His stuff is great. He's got a great YouTube channel. Definitely subscribe. Um, granted, this was the second airing of a widely watched episode from a less than current season of the show. This initial reception to the series' uh, public debut does not bode well for the series' future on the broadcast channel. Star Trek Discovery's first season will continue airing Thursdays at 10 p.m. on CBS. Well, um, look. Oh, yeah. And don't forget. Don't forget. In the upcoming third season. This is exciting. Let your friends know. They will introduce both transgender and non-binary characters. Thank goodness, because that's that's what makes the story. The gender identity is the story. No, it's not. It's not. It debuts on October 15th, 2020. So I'm sure we'll be looking forward to that. Uh, tell me what you think in the comments below. Are, are you impressed? Are you surprised? Are you also shocked at the abysmal ratings of Star Trek Discovery on CBS? And generally on its, um, the poor reception in general to it. Are you surprised? Do you see a leader in this group? Is it just me? I really don't. Also, if you want to support my work, subscribe to the channel, click the bell for notifications, and check out collegeofthedead.com. Pick up a copy of College of the Dead Graduation Day, where college costs you an arm or leg. It's an ongoing zombie apocalypse series. Will this be a TV show? That's what people keep asking me. The answer is I am not telling you. Uh, but it is, of course it's going to be a TV show. Of course it's going to be a film series. Of course there are going to be toys. Give me a little time. It takes a while to like work out deals and be wheeling and dealing and stuff like that. It's not important. What's important is that the story is good and that um, I love what I make and that my customers love it as much as me uh, or really enjoy it. I think you'll really like this uh, series. It's uh, two books in and it is an ongoing series, so check it out. Um, and only ship immediately because it's in print. I always keep my promises on delivery. I'm really big on that. And you can also sign up at epicmermaids.com. Get on the, mer the mermaids email list. I don't send out a lot of emails. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm only going to send out an email when the mermaids is ready to launch. So you get a heads up. So you're like, hey, 
yeah, I'm interested in this mermaid thing. What's this all about? Well, uh, as the email will tell you, but I'll tell you in advance because we're friends now. The email, the, the mermaids is kind of like Game of Thrones with uh, mermaids. Um, it's it is a very involved story. There's a lot of characters. You can follow what's going on. It's very well written. Uh, I put it together with a bunch of really great creators, and um, I love the freaking thing. So you will love it too. All right, I'll see you again soon with another video, and if I don't see you, I will miss you.